There's a fish. Oh, that's a good one, guys. That's a decent fish. Oh, that's a decent fish, guys. It's a little bit better fish right there. That might be a... Yeah, that's a Hey guys, welcome to the Cameraman Ron channel. I appreciate you joining me for another fishing adventure here in beautiful Pensacola, Florida, where today we are just trying to find a place that's holding some fish away from this heat. We have had some of the hottest water we've ever experienced here in Pensacola in our bay system, and it has certainly had an effect on the fishing. So we've been out on like three or four trips in a row and have not had any success. So today I brought up some live shrimp. I'm gonna be hitting some new areas that you guys don't commonly see us fish. I got a couple seawalls, a couple spots out in the bay. Maybe hit a bridge or two just to see if we can't catch something to put in the cooler, take home, and do a catch and cook for you guys. It's been a minute since I have been able to actually take a fish inshore home and cook it up. Now, of course, we've got that fish that we caught offshore when we were out with Ryan Reed, but I want some inshore fish, either a red snapper, maybe a flounder, maybe a mangrove snapper, trout. I don't care what it is. I just want to take something home, cook it up, and bring you guys along. So thank you for being here. That's enough talking. Let's put some lines in the water and some fish on the deck. guys first shrimp going down oh already golly i think he hit it on the way down what we got here what is that a black sea bass that's what that is guys that is a black sea bass all day that is awesome man that is actually a really really cool catch for me guys so the one i actually caught out at the bridge that day was just a regular sea bass. It is this, this is a black sea bass. Y'all check him out right there. Not a bad one. Let's get you back. See, you, dude. And guys, all I'm doing, just putting a live shrimp on a little Mewtwo light tournament hook. Got a half or eighth ounce sinker on there with a little split shot holding it in place. Dropping down these live shrimp right here along this sea wall. Already got flipper out here coming to play. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's kind of chilling about right here. You guys, there's mangrove snappers just busting on bait over here. So I know there's some mangroves here. fish on there's a fish on oh yeah good mangrove snapper guys good mangrove that's what we're after right there keeper size mangrove snapper to take back and cook up that right there is 100 percent the ticket folks that's what we're after today right there oh yeah as you guys can see right there nose on zero i don't even have him stretched out and he's well over 12 inches. So nice little 12 inch mangrove snapper. Let's go, baby. Guys, I'm seeing these mangrove snapper chasing bait. It's crazy. Oh, he got me in structure. There must be quite a bit of structure down there, guys, but I'm literally seeing these mangrove snappers swim around i've never sight fished mangroves before but that's kind of what we're doing today because i can see them swimming around there's fish on there we go might be another decent mangrove oh no <laughs> a little jack creval so we're running the species gamut today and guys that's kind of what it's been man it's been just a lot simmer buddy simmer you get in the belly you get in the belly yeah you know you wanted the belly you got it 
just lots and lots of small fish here lately guys but you know what i mean after the last few days i've had i'm not mad because i'm gonna be honest with you guys this is like my fourth trip in a row where we've come out to catch fish and we're finally catching you know some decent fish got that keeper mango snapper black sea bass now jack creval we have just i'm gonna show you guys a couple clips here of all that we've been able to do y'all check it out yeah <laughs> lane that's my second lane this week that's crazy y'all check that out another lane snapper we caught our first one of these here i don't know a week or so ago and uh a very very pretty fish now if we could manage to get one of these sized up just a little bit we could keep those yeah pretty pretty fish right there guys Nice little lane snapper. See you, dude. That's a better one. That's definitely a better one, guys. Much better, man. Oh, what is that? Oh, guys. It's a big old blue fish. That is a big blue fish. Golly. Hammer, buddy. Big, big blue fish right there, guys. Y'all check that dude out right there. <laughs> Good blue fish. I mean, look again, nothing like the great big ones up in the northeast, but uh for this area, that's a really good blue fish. I'll take it. Now we just need to need to size up our mango snapper a little bit. See you, dude. Alright guys, maybe a little bit better fish here. That gone it. Just another really, really big <laughs> red snapper that's out of season. Come on. Not what we're trying to do here, folks. You watch. I'll come out here next weekend. And I won't be able to catch one of these fish to save my life. Because next weekend, season is open on them. So, there's no chance we'll catch one next weekend. Red snapper. So just a lot of like juvenile red snapper, a couple nice red snapper, baby mangroves. I did catch that one really, really decent blue fish. So, not mad about that. But this weather has just been so dadgum hot that it's just, it's really wreaked havoc on fishing. It, the bay temperature, I don't know what it normally is, but like right now the bay is sitting at like 90 to 91 degrees, which is way hotter um, than what we are used to experiencing here in our area. So I'm just glad to be on a good bite today. So we're gonna put some more live shrimp in here and see if we can't put some more fish on this deck. I've only got enough mango snapper in the cooler for me. So uh, if I don't step up my game, I might have to find somewhere to cook it so nobody else knows about it and I don't get in trouble. There we go, we got him. Come on, be a mangrove. It is another different species. It is a big fish. So guys, like, this is the cool thing about coming out here and doing this with live shrimp. Obviously, we want keeper mangrove snappers. That's what we're after. So we can take them home and cook them up. But you get so many different varieties of fish when you're fishing like this. <laughs> That's crazy. That's just a little pig fish right there. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. Oh, that's a decent fish, guys. It's a little bit better fish right there. That might be, a, that's a good mangrove snapper. That is a good mangrove right there, guys. Heck yeah. Nice mangrove snapper. He hit it, and there was no doubt on that one, folks. There was no doubt on that one. Go get the belly. Go get the belly. Simmer. Simmer, bro. And this dude's not in great shape. I'm going to be honest with you guys. But that's all right because he's plenty big enough to keep. And we are keeping fish. So we're going to have to get this hook out. I'm going to have to do a little surgery on him. All right, guys. Nice little mangrove snapper right there. I ain't mad about it. 
I did have to end up cutting it off, but the hook's down in there, but I'll get it out whenever I, I clean them up here in a little bit. But let's go, that's keeper number two. We're starting to get some fish in the box to eat now. I hope you all are enjoying the fishing so far. If you are, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you are new here. If you're returning and you like the videos and you haven't subscribed yet, we would be so honored if you would consider doing that. It doesn't cost you a single penny. And when you hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn on your notification bell so you know each and every time we upload new content. Let's put some more fish in here. I showed you guys earlier how we were rigging up our live shrimp. We are just running some Power Pro 15 pound braid up to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Just got a little split shot on there with a little 1 8 out. Paired up with my Ninja 7 foot go to dagger and a Spin Fisher 5 or 6. Golly, I guess it's a 6, a Spin Fisher 6 2500. Nothing I'm fishing for today. Um, I need really, really big tackle for it. So even if we go out and we hit a spot that holds big red snapper or something like that, this setup is more than capable of handling that. It does tend to break off a little bit if you get it in too much structure but ideally with this rod setup that's another fish right there with this rod setup i can pull those fish out of structure pretty quick so i don't lose a lot of them to it every now and then they'll get you in there but for the most part this is a great setup for inshore fishing like we're doing today realistically if i could catch one more good mangrove snapper we'd be money in the bank there's a bite fish on fish on oh not what we wanted but I guess it does add to our species count on a day. Belly cootas. Easy, easy. You gonna get the belly. You gonna get the belly. Simmer. All right, just a little belly cooter. All right, guys, the bite has really, really died off here. We're gonna go ahead and drop down one or two more shrimp along this seawall. Then we may go hit the bridge for a minute, see if anything's popping off over there. And if not, we might start working our way back across the bay. I got a few bay spots we can hit to see if we can catch us another keeper mangrove. People have been catching tons and tons of big mangrove snapper all over um, Pensacola Bay. So hopefully if we're lucky, we can, uh oh, where's a fish? There's a fish, just as I said that I said, we were... uh, what we got? Oh my gosh. Guys, we are running the gamut today. It is a toad fish now. For the first time ever, I heard somebody call this the other day a mother-in-law fish because um, they say it, it's ugly as your mother-in-law. Now, I'm not saying that about my mother-in-law. I'm just saying, you know, that's what people call them. So I don't know if that's a, that's a thing or not, but uh, <laughs> that is 100% a little toadfish. Y'all check him out right there. They are some ugly little fellas, and they got some gnarly, gnarly teeth for real. Let's give you one more look at that little fella right there before we put him back um they say some people say they're venomous some people say they're not so i don't know i don't i try not to touch them unless i'm just playing jokes on people because they do look like boogers but uh let's get this dude back see you man he gone and of course as soon as i started talking about stopping fishing here you know you catch fish that's the way it always goes if you just talk about leaving typically you know you'll, you'll at least get a bite or two but uh that's another good bite right there guys Fish on. Fish on. He's running. Oh, and it is another mangrove snapper. But that one's just a little guy, not the keeper. Simmer, buddy. Simmer. Not the keeper that we're looking for right there, folks. We need them a little bit. Well, I tried to grab him, kick him. He's got beautiful colors, though. Y'all check him out right there. Pretty little mangrove. Let's see, man. There's a fish. There's a fish on. Oh, he's gonna be just short. He's only gonna be about a nine inch mangrove. Simmer, simmer. Not as pretty as the last one either. Just a little guy there. There's a fish. Oh, that's a good one, guys. That's a decent fish. That's a decent fish, guys. Oh, 
you got in that motor. Guys, I don't know what these are, but they are good. Oh, that's a nice, nice mangrove snapper right there, guys. Another keeper mangrove all day. Let's go, baby. That's our third keeper mangrove for the box. Heck yeah. Just check him just to make sure. Oh yeah, he's 10 all day. I know you guys have heard me tell you before, but in our area of Florida, we can keep five mango snappers. Minimum size on them is 10. Um, so we are about a little over halfway to our one man limit, but I got a feeling the way they're eating right here, this might be the spot. There we go, there's fish. That's another decent one, guys. No, he's not a keeper. He might be. He's too close to keeper size for me to keep. I'm gonna guess he simmer, buddy, simmer. Probably a little nine-inch mangrove. I doubt that he's 10. He's pooping all over me. Little jerk. There we go, there's fish on it. Just gonna be a little in there. Little bitty pig fish. Typically, if there's this many fish in this area, you'll hook into a trout most of the time. Not always, but there's a fish. There we go. <clears throat> Another keeper size mangrove. Ah, he's probably a little under, actually. Simmer. As he stopped flopping, he got smaller. Just a little, probably eight or nine incher there. This, this spot is just infested with mangrove snappers. Luckily, we was able to pull a keeper off of it, but there is plenty of babies in there too, that's for sure. There we go. Guys, it's every cast now. Oh, this one might be out. Oh yeah, we got something different here. What we got? Oh, no, we got another bluefish. Now this is nowhere near as big as the bluefish we showed you guys earlier. Simmer, buddy, simmer. This is nowhere near as big as the bluefish we showed you guys earlier in the video that I caught a day or two ago. But that is another little bluefish. See you, dude. There we go, there's another fish, guys. Definitely gonna be another keeper size mangrove right there. There he is. All right, guys, we're gonna make one more cast here and then we're gonna take it back over to our bayou and uh, get these mangrove snappers cooked up. We fish on? We are fish on, but it's just another little mangrove snapper. But I'm going to hold true to my word. It's going to be the last one over here. We're going to take it back over towards our bayou. All right, guys. That's going to wrap up the fishing part. We caught a lot of fish today, and I'm not going to lie to y'all. It felt good to bend a rod and put some fish in the boat, be able to take something back, cook it up. Because like I said, it's been a minute since we've caught anything inshore that we were actually able to keep. So pretty stoked on that. Ready to get back to the house, cook these fish up. You guys you guys got a little, little something, something, something right there. Oh, there you guys are. I think you like fell asleep on the boat ride home or something. But anyways, we're already back at the house, ready to cook up some mangrove snapper in a brand new way. We have never, ever cooked this before. We got PYT back behind the camera. She doesn't even know what we're doing. I told her, I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to surprise you today. I'm going to try to make it something really cool. So hopefully we're going to be able to do that. But we got a couple things we're going to start with right now. I'm getting some butter ready over here on the pan. I've already got the mangrove snapper cleaned up. We're going to chop that up here real quick. Then we're going to chop up some fresh greens. Got some spices, some butter, and I got some potatoes in the oven. Anybody want to guess right now what we're making? PYT, do you want to guess what we're making? I have no clue. I don't know. All right. I don't so know. We're, we're going to walk you guys through it. And I want to, you're, you're going to slowly figure it out as we get there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And you guys comment down below if you know right now what we're making. All right, guys. And what we're doing is we're coming through and we're just going to cube up our mangrove snapper. Like I said, I've already got this cleaned up and ready to rock and roll, but we're going to make it into some nice little fish strips. 
Any any guesses yet, PYT, of what we're making? I have no idea. All right, guys. So we've got all of our fish chunked out. Going to bring that over there. Going to put it in butter. And it won't take long to cook this up whatsoever. Mm. You know what else I had you at? What? Could you tell the folks at home what those are? It's a lemon and a lime. Yeah, which one's which? Because uh, <laughs> I, I, there's some debate on whether or not you know the answer to that question. This is a lemon. This is a lime. That's right. You, you definitely blatantly called one not the other <laughs> the other day, if we're being honest here. We're going to go in with some of this lemon. Can't go wrong with extra lemon. Extra lemon. I knew the flavor I wanted, I just didn't know the name of it. Chopping up some fresh stuff for our base on this. We'll mix those two together. All right, guys, gonna go ahead and pull our fish out here. You wanna keep your fish nice and together there. All right, so that's the first step. Now, you guys have already seen me chop up the green stuff for it. We are going to go ahead and take that and we're going to dump it in with our okay. butter. So we can saute it and turn that down just a little bit. On this part, you can do fresh or minced garlic. We're going to do minced garlic just because I was too lazy to actually cut one of them up. And then we're going to saute that until it's all nice and done. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and tell you because when we pull the next thing out, most of you at home are going to know exactly what we are making. We are actually making fried fish cakes. Are you serious? Yeah, so uh, this is going to be the base. I've got the potatoes in the oven. I've had those in there for about an hour and a half. They were big potatoes. Um, so we're getting really, really close to being able to pull those out, get the flesh out of those. And then we're gonna add this to it, add the fish to it. We're gonna fry them up and we're gonna have fried fish cakes. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna cut our potato in half and let it cool off, and then we're gonna scoop out the inside and put it in a bowl. And if you're ever having to scoop out potatoes out of the skin, an ice cream scooper works amazing for those of you watching at home. I'm not sure who I saw do this the first time, but it definitely works very, very well. All right, so now, guys, we're gonna take this okay. with all of our goodness there. We're going to put that in there. I want to leave some of the butter in there because we're going to fry our cakes in that too. And you don't want to use a mixer on these because you want your potatoes to have a little bit of texture to them. You don't want them to be really, really smooth like mashed potatoes because then that can make it kind of taste like baby food. This is one of those times where we I wish we had smell-o-vision because uh, you guys would be feeling it right now. With that onion and garlic, it's like, mmm. I'm going to taste it just to make sure we're good. Good. You gotta try this PYT. Is it hot? It's gonna be hot. Mm. I can't wait to finish this. Wow. I had to make mashed potatoes like that with the garlic and chive, like green onions. All right, then we're gonna take our fish. We're gonna dump every bit of that. Now this is where you really wanna be careful because the fish is already soft. So you don't really want to mash this. What you want to do is stir it in. Because what you're trying to do is make magic. Is make a filling. But you don't want the same thing from before. You don't want to just mush up all your fish. Okay, in 100% transparency and honesty, PYT had to take over the making of the of the cake balls or whatever we're calling them here because uh they were falling apart on me. So what I did, I like... I think we should do a couple flat and a couple round. You can try. But when I put it in the egg, it fell apart on me. Yeah, it's a little... We that, had a little too much butter, but hey, you can't go wrong with butter. Girl, Paula Dean would smack the crap out of you right now if she heard you say something like too much butter. That's not even a thing. And then in the skillet. Whoop, whoop. 
All right, guys, so we are going to pull these out of here. Oh, my goodness. Definitely did not hold together quite as well as what we would have liked, but they're not bad. Oh, but look at that one. That one did good. Yeah, that one turned out really good. Some of them definitely fell apart. All right, presentation, I'm going to give myself a really low score on. Um, but I bet they're going to taste really... Oh, no. You could, like, sprinkle some chives over it and then, like, drizzle it with ramelot, and it would look like restaurant quality. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll fix it up here in a minute. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, guys. So, we are trying a new spot here for our catch and cooks. Um, went out and bought a... This is, like, the 15th table we bought for this house. It's <laughs> well, ridiculous. Because, okay. So. so, this is technically a mudroom, but we use it for a dining room slash mudroom. Yeah. And it kind of goes on a little slant, so... Yeah. I seem taller today. It's basically, it's basically <laughs> like my whole life. So, all right, PYT, you try them first. I'm going to try one of like the, the loosey-goosey ones without Romulot first. I think they're going to be really mm. good. <laughs> I'm going to make a mess. They smell really good. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. got an amazing flavor. Amazing flavor. That's really good. I want to drizzle a little. Yeah, if you're looking for something to do with fish and you don't like a real fishy taste, mm -hmm. I know people make fun of that all the time, but some people just don't like a fishy mm -hmm. taste. Um, and these are the way to go. I'll take it all. That is really good. <laughs> I do want to try. The sauce is a win too. And it's just store bought ramen sauce. Mm -hmm. We didn't. I was already going all out on the the cakes. I didn't want to like have to make a sauce as well. So. I like your cakes, baby. <laughs> mm. It's good. That's really good. That's really good. We did put, I think, a little too much butter. That's why they weren't as like... That's what happened. And yeah. leave a comment down below if you know what happened that they didn't hold texture. Because I know a lot of you guys do a lot of cooking. Um, let us know kind of why they didn't hold texture. Because that was really the only issue we ran into. The flavor is phenomenal. Um, that we, it doesn't taste like mush in the middle. So I feel like we mashed mm -hmm. the potatoes just enough. The fish is still nice and flaky inside of there. So you can still tell that it's fish. Um, the only issue I, I feel we like, we have, one yeah, like that one, thing. um, I just feel like for some reason they just didn't hold together. So y'all leave a comment down below. I'm going to try this one because <laughs> that one's like almost like that's how they're supposed to be. Tell us how to keep it together. <laughs> Ma'am. Oh, they're really good. We forgot to yeah. take a picture. I'm not, oh. Sorry, guys. Mm. We can pull a still. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. Last thing I want to address before we log off with you guys today. One, again, thank you guys so much for your patience. It has been crazy hot. The fishing's been yeah, nuts. I'm sweating in here after cooking. Yeah, and we've got an air conditioner <laughs> running. Um, somebody left this on my truck the other day at the boat ramp. It says, just want you to know, love what you do, keep doing you. The guy parked next to you. That and was awesome. Man, like, that was so cool. Little things like this... <laughs> I can't tell you guys how much it means to me. Honest to goodness, I can't. Because it just kind of lets us know that you guys are enjoying mm -hmm. what we're doing. We put a lot of work into these videos. And I know sometimes that may not show, but we really do put a lot of work oh, into yeah. each and every one of those that we shoot. So to get something like this, that where somebody really enjoys it and like <laughs> is enjoying the videos and the content we're putting out, that means the world to us. Guys, thank y'all so much for always being here with us. As always, make sure you find a way to make somebody smile today. You never know. It just might change the world. <laughs> we can't wait to see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care. We will see you soon.